On this sheet, I've got a three level drop down. The top level is the country. The second level is the state or the region within that country. And the third level is the city within that state or region. So here I've got Australia, and in my drop down list, I've got Australia or New Zealand. For Australia, I've then got the eight states and territories listed. Now, whichever state or region I choose, the cities within that state or region are then listed at level three. Now, if I change the top level one to say New Zealand, and then the state or region now says North or South Island. So let's just pick one of those. And then the city changes to Auckland or Wellington. So basically, as you drill down here, this is the information we're using. So here we have Australia, New Zealand. Underneath Australia, we have the eight states and territories listed. Under New Zealand, we have North and South Island listed. In the second table, we've got the next level down. So we've got each individual state or territory going across here for the first eight columns. And beneath those, the various cities within those states or territories. Now, obviously, this isn't all of them. It's just for a demonstration, so it's just cut down. The last two here are the North Island and South Island for the New Zealand. And underneath each of those, it shows you the cities in each of those islands. So how did I build this system where whatever I choose at the top level then determines what appears on the next level, and whatever I choose on the second level then determines what appears on the third level. It's all dependent. So here we've got a clean start. I've cleared out all the validation that was in B1 to B3, so each of these now don't have a drop-down list available to them. Now the first thing we need to do, or at least it helps us, is to name our ranges. So there's two ways to name a range. You can either select each range separately like this, let's say the eight states and territories for Australia, then go to your name box and call them something like states. Okay, that's one way to do it. But if you've got stuff arranged in tables with column headings available, you can use those column headings as the names for your table ranges, or for your named ranges, should I say. I'm gonna select this whole first table, so the two column headings and all the data beneath it. Then on the formulas tab at the top, next to name manager, you've got an option called create from selection. And this gives you four tick boxes. And what you say is, which area within this range I've just chosen contains the things I want to use as the names. So for us, on this one, that's the top row. So when I click OK, it's now created two named ranges called Australia and New Zealand. And if you want to see those, you go to your name drop down at the top here, and you'll see Australia, which shows this range here, and also New Zealand, which shows this range here. Let me do the same for the bottom table. So I'm going to select the whole thing, go to the formulas tab again, create from selection, choose the top row only, and click OK. So now it's created ranges called Queensland, New South Wales, Victoria, and so on. And if you look in our drop-down list here, you'll see all of those ranges exist. So that's the first step. And that just makes our whole process going forwards a lot easier. Now, lots of people have different approaches and different ways to get this kind of thing done. My favorite approach is to use what's called the indirect function. Now, what the indirect function does is you provide it with a cell reference, and it goes and gets the contents of that cell reference. So you could say equals indirect of B1, or dollar $B dollar $1 or B1 to B5. All those kind of things will work. You can also give it a named range to use. So here's an example. Let me put 100 into this cell here. And in the cell beneath, I'm gonna say equals indirect, open brackets, and then in quotes, the reference D1. And again, I could say dollar $D, dollar $1. In this case, it doesn't really matter, it's just referring to one cell. And when I press enter, it goes and collects the contents from D1. So that's the kind of thing we're doing here for this next bit, starting with the country. Now for country, it's actually very easy. You just refer to these two cells here and do a straightforward data validation. So for the top level, that's what you do. So with the cell selected, I'm gonna to go to the data tab here, choose data validation, and on the settings tab, allow a list, and for the source, I'm just gonna to point to these two cells here, just like I always would, and click okay. I then can choose Australia or New Zealand. For the next one though, this is where the first indirect needs to be placed. So I'm gonna start with equals indirect, open the brackets. Now, instead of referring to a cell or a cell range, I'm going to refer to the range that I named before, which could either be Australia or New Zealand. Now, based on my choice in B1, the entry here matches the name for my named range because it's picked it off the heading. So I'm just going to refer to B1, close the brackets and enter. Now you'll see it's given you a hash value here as a result. But if you go to your formula here and press F9, it'll show you all the contents, all the different values for Australia. And that's what you want. So let's just escape that. What I'm gonna do is to take the formula here and cut it, and then go to the data tab, go to the data validation, and allow a list and paste in the formula that I've just copied. So it's using the indirect value of cell B1, which is Australia, to use the named range called Australia for its list of valid values. And when we click OK, we've now got a drop-down list that shows you the various options for Australia. Now, just to show that this works, 
If we now go back to the top level item and choose New Zealand, and then go to the second level item again, it now shows you the options under New Zealand. So whatever this range here is, whatever the options are down here, that's what's gonna show in the second option. So for the third one, we just repeat the process, but we work it on the bottom table. So in this cell here, let me just write it first of all. So equals indirect, open brackets, and then click on B2. So whatever current state or region is selected, that's what it's gonna to use to pick up the name, to pick up then the correct range of cells down here for the options on level three. So again, if I press enter, I'll get that hash value error, but it doesn't matter. All I need here is the formula, which I'm then going to paste into the data validation as a list. So allow a list, go to the source box, paste in my formula. Now I could just come in here and paste this in directly, but that just wants to show you the process of building it into a formula, check the values are correct, and then cut and paste it into your validation criteria. So with that done, click OK, we should now have the options for whatever state or region is currently selected in B2. Now at the moment, this says New South Wales and this says New Zealand. Now that combination doesn't actually exist. So in a minute, I'll fix that up. But let's just work with New South Wales for the time being. If you look at New South Wales down here, it has options for Sydney, Newcastle, Parramatta. And if I click the green cell here and check the drop down options, it is those three. So let's go back to the top now. We'll stick with New Zealand, but we're gonna change this second option to say North Island. And now look at the drop down options and you'll see there are none that exist. Now the reason for this is because we've chosen an option called North Island with a space between North and Island. But if you look at the heading down here, it's got North underscore Island and South underscore Island for the South one as well. So I'm gonna fix up the formula to replace the space with an underscore, but I'll do it all within the data validation formula itself. So I'm gonna click the green cell, back to data validation, go to my formula here, and replace just a direct reference to B2 with what's called a substitute. Now what a substitute formula does, is it takes a cell or a piece of content and it replaces one bit of text, which in this case I'm saying is the space, with another piece of text, which I'm saying is underscore. So I look at the contents of B2 and if there's any spaces there, replace it with an underscore. Put the extra closing bracket in and click okay. If we now look at this, we should have the options for North Island, which as you can see from the list down here is correct. Let's just check South Island while we're here. So we change this to South Island, look at the options in the green cell, and it's picked up the three options underneath South Island correctly. So it's all working at three levels. So just to recap, the top level, we can do a straightforward data validation, just looking at a direct range of cells. In this case, there's only two, but there could be more. For subsequent levels, so we did levels two and three, we use an indirect function, which looked at a cell and picked up the contents in that cell and used that to do a match on a range we'd previously named before we did the validation. So things like Australia contains this range of cells here. And every column heading you see in the first and second tables here, we used that for the name for each of the ranges that we're using. We then did an indirect to pick up the range of cells as defined by that name, and that's what we see in our drop-down list. For the third one, we had to do something special for things like two words here, which had an underscore in the heading, but no underscore in the option that we'd selected. So we did a substitute within the indirect to replace any space with an underscore and therefore there was a match on the name and it could pick up the right range as it needed to. So that's the process. And like I say, if you were to ask six different people how they went about this process, you'd probably get six different answers. This is my preference. I like using the indirect feature because you can actually pick up text rather than working with abstract numbers, which you often have to use when you do things like choose and offsets and things like that. So thank you for checking out this video. Subscribe if you'd like to see more videos like this and please share this video if you know someone who you think might benefit from seeing it. I've put lots of links in the description beneath this video. So that's it for this one. If you've got any questions or comments, pop them in the comments beneath this video and I'll be sure to get back to you. Okay, talk soon.